Swimming. Good afternoon. Good morning. Ugh. Good afternoon, a very warm welcome to the Park Plaza here uh, by Westminster Bridge, the central part of London, for a capital showdown. A fabulous rematch, one that uh, everyone has been hoping for. Uh, much anticipation, speculation, whether it would happen or not, after the wonderful event we had, the build-up and the fight night itself at the O2, first time around. We've had great rematches, of course, over the years. The likes of Eubank and Ben and Tyson Holyfield, Gatti Ward, Morales Pereira. Some even go into trilogies. Could we possibly have one of those? So many questions to be answered. So much shown in the first fight with uh, Tony Bellew upsetting the odds and getting a wonderful career-defining win to add to his world cruiserweight title that he won so spectacularly at Goodison Park. What about David Hay? What bravery he showed in the final few rounds to carry on competing as best he could with that terrible injury to the Achilles. Well, he's back. The injury has been repaired. He's fighting fit. He has a new trainer under Ishmael Salas, and he's, uh, he knows this is his last chance saloon. For Tony Bellew, will it be repeat, or will it be revenge? For David Hay. Let's get straight to Eddie Hearn. Thank you, Adam. Thanks for everyone turning out today. It's an incredible turnout, as always. Um, this was an important fight to make, I think, for boxing. Tony Bell, you had a number of options, but when we always went back to the fans, to the people, Bell, you Hay, too, was the one that everybody wanted to see. Um, it hasn't been easy. It's been a very difficult fight to make, but I think the drama of the first fight, the quality of the first fight as well, meant that this was one that had to happen. From our side, the first fight was a good opportunity for Tony Bellew. We, we thought we could win the fight. This time we expect to win the fight. I believe we're the favourite going into the fight. But it's turned into an event, from an event, into a great fight, a great heavyweight fight. I think one of the best heavyweight fights out there in boxing right now. And what a year 2017 has been. Of course, Hey Bellew won. Uh, Kel Brook against Errol Spence, Anti Joshua against Vladimir Klitschko, the circus in Vegas with Mayweather and McGregor, the Golovkin against Canelo fight, and we cap it off on Sunday the 17th at the O2 Arena with Bell U Hay 2. It's a great fight, a great heavyweight matchup. Tickets are going to absolutely fly up. We expect huge numbers again on Sky Box Office. And I'm very proud of this man next to me because he's really become a working class hero. <coughs> So, so popular. Everywhere he goes now, he gets absolutely mobbed because people have found out what the real Tony Bellew is all about. No longer just a, a loud mouth scouser. He's now a loud mouth scouser that can fight, that delivers, that's won world titles, that's stepped up, that's won major fights at heavyweight, and has actually become one of the most popular fighters in world boxing, certainly in British boxing as well. And I'm very proud of this young man because people are finding out what he's about. Providing for his family, taking on the challenges, and he stepped up once again, written off time and time again. Won the world title at Goodison Park, stepped up, beat David Hay. And on December the 17th, this isn't a challenge for us anymore, this is more of a job to go out and win this fight. And like I said, the whole team are now not hopeful of winning the fight, they're expecting to win the fight on December 17th. We can't wait. We're going to build a great undercard with Haymaker Boxing, and we look forward to a great show. Thank you. Yep, Team Benny ready to go. Team Hay as well. I'll pass over to Alan Morley. Thanks, Adam. I think after March the 4th, the most important thing 
was to accept what happened. Tony Belly won, David lost. And once you reach that position of acceptance, you can move on. And you reset and you look at your goals. David's goal is simple, to be the number one heavyweight in the world. It's a simple goal and he's got to go and take the necessary steps to achieve that. How does he do that? He assesses everything that happened. You look at everything, you accept what has happened, and then you do what you need to do. You change what you need to change, and the next step on the way to becoming and reaching the goal that David wants to reach was to fight Tony Bellew again, to get revenge, to take the next step. And that's what David's gonna do. And um, come December 17th, I think, people will see the difference and people will understand what's happened in the interim. But um, David's confident, David's happy, and I think he should do the talking. Thanks very much, Adam. David was under the tutelage of an excellent young trainer in Shane McGuigan. He's made a change and he's brought in a very, very experienced man who's worked with the likes of uh, Rigondo and uh, Donaire and Jorge Linares. He's revitalised Jorge, obviously. We've seen him against Anthony Crawler a couple of times, Luke Campbell uh, the other week. And that is uh, Ishmael Salas. Good to see you, Ishmael. How excited are you about working with David? Hey, good afternoon to everyone. Thank you so much to bring me here. I appreciate, I really respect uh, David Hay. Uh, to bring me up to his team. Uh, as you know, we are in direct confrontation sport where each, each, each guy likes to win. Each guy likes to win, same as the team. And I came just to win. Don't know with all my respect to them, but we are working to win and not win the fight. We will try to win round by round to make, to ensure, no doubt. Uh, I don't like to be like a bit big mouth right now. I just like to do, then say, and really, you will you will face the real challenge, and you will help me. Thank you. Thanks, Ishmael, for my well-renowned trainer, the one who's really making his name here uh, in Britain with the McDonald brothers and uh, Anthony Fowler's good win at the weekend, and of course his uh, terrific <laughs> relationship with uh, Tony Bellew. Uh, that's uh, our good friend Dave Caldwell. Thanks, Adam. Um, it's not really a lot to say. Uh, I enjoyed the last fight. It was a the build-up was fun. The event was great, and um, the fight went pretty much as we we'd expected. I know it was a shock to a lot of people, and I know um, Eddie was saying, you know, we was hoping for a win rather than expecting. But behind closed doors, we were expecting a win. Obviously, we didn't expect. Um, exactly how it went um, but we expected to win nonetheless we also expected um, a different day day to what turned up on the night so it's not going to be uh, a big shock that on December the 17th we do see a better version of David A. I expect him you know he's got a fantastic coach now in, in Ismail but he's always had good coaches Adam Booth was a fantastic coach for David A. Shane McGuigan's a, a well-respected, good coach, and we were expecting a newer version, Haymaker 2.0. Um, so I am expecting a better version of David A, like we prepared for last time. And I think we will see a great event and a great fight, but I'm expecting a better Tony Bellew as well. Uh, the things that we work on camp by camp just get ingrained into his brain a little bit more each camp, each camp. So the familiarity, the regularity of training, the things that we're doing that we worked on for the previous fight, I'll just roll on into this fight, couple with a few different things. So obviously once you're in the ring with an opponent, you kind of get the measure. And like David is with, with Tony, he'll take from, from that fight for himself. Tony will take things from David from being in the ring with him. So I, I expect a better fight all round from both fighters. I think it's going to be great for the fans. Um, we'll prepare to the best of our ability. David will prepare to the best of his ability. And um, it's going to be it's going to be fireworks. Obviously, I believe it's going to repeat. Like, I believe that we were going to win the first fight. I think you'll see again, you know, the re this fight had to happen because there's so many people that think that we fluked it and, you know, got lucky. Um... This is boxing. Anything can happen in boxing, as it should. But, you know, as far as we're concerned, it's repeat.
Thanks, Dave. Yes, so many questions to be answered. Let's get straight to the fighters, the former cruiserweight and heavyweight champion of the world. And on the comeback trail, David Hay. Uh, thanks, Adam. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, very happy to be sitting here to announce this, um, this mega event on December 17th at the O2 Arena. You know, it was seven, sorry, seven months, basically, to the day that myself and Tony Bellew had our epic battle, where, which will be etched into the British public's memory for many years to come. Uh, it was a great fight to be involved in. Everybody who was there watching live and everybody who tuned in via Skybox box office got value for money. Everybody really did truly enjoy uh, the, the, the build-up, the fight and the aftermath. It left everybody with an opinion. And that's what you want in boxing. That's, that's what takes boxing from you know, just a, a, an average Saturday night or actually Sunday night this fight's going to be on to a mega event that people remember forever. Um, I've, since, uh, since the fight, I've trained basically, I, the fight was on a Saturday night from Monday, the Monday after the fight, I think of March 7th, sorry, March 6th, I've been back training. You know, there's only certain parts of my body I can train, but I've been working hard in the, with the mindset of I will fight again in December. Even before I even started my rehabilitation, I was always going to fight in December. I told myself, I told my body, I told my soul that I will be back in the ring before the end of the year and I've done everything humanly possible um, to get back to where I believe I should be. I mean, I believe I'm in better shape strangely now than ten and a half weeks out from uh, December 17th than I was walking to the ring. I'm, I'm happy with uh, the new setup I have. Ishmael Salas has been working with me uh, day in, day out. And we had our first official day of training on Monday. And I, I was very, very happy with what we were doing. Very happy with the, uh, the flow and the vibe. We've, we spent enough time together now to really push down this final uh, sort of 10 weeks. Um, going into this fight, going into the first fight, Tony Bellew's motivations were clear and very obvious to see. He wanted to secure his family. And for any athlete, any human being, that should always be uh, first and foremost in your mind. And I'm very happy that that happened. You know, I, I co-promoted the event with uh, Eddie Hearn and Matchroom, and I know what Tony Bellew got paid for the first fight and mission completed. He's financially secured for the rest of his life. He's a multimillionaire. And that's, that's fantastic. He's, he's welcome to a, a very small uh, club of British boxers who have enough money to, where they don't have to box, they don't have to have a job. They can sit on the beach for the rest of their life and they're comfortable. So with that being said, what I, I, look, I ask myself, what are his motivations going into his second fight? He beat me the first time round. Plain and simple. He got the victory. His hand was raised. My corner threw in the towel. He won the fight. I didn't believe I'd get this opportunity again. I genuinely thought, I asked for it in the ring, I said, if you'd oblige a rematch, the fans want it. I didn't think it would happen. I genuinely didn't. I was looking at other options. But Tony, for, for some reason, um, wants to do it again. And, you know, great. You know, people you know, put their lives on the line, people get in the ring. He said on numerous occasions how dangerous boxing is, you know, and, you know, people, people rob banks to secure their family. They put their life on, they could get shot in the bank, they could you know, go to prison forever, but they do it to secure their family. That's a, re a genuine reason people rob banks. And when you get away from them, when you rob the bank once, do you go back to the same bank again? When your family is secured, do you go back to the same bank to, just to get a little bit more money? Maybe. Or is his hatred so bad for the, the clerk behind the desk that he wants to rob some more money? Maybe, I don't maybe it is, and if it is, when we're in the ring, when we're going toe to toe, is his desire to secure his family, which he's done now, as strong as him wanting to beat me? I don't know. We, this, is, this, is up, this is up in the air. Nobody knows. Only people tuning in on December 17th will find out. Um, I know what my motivations are. They're, to, they're for revenge. I want to be the best fighter in the world, hit heavyweight. He's said clearly he doesn't want to fight anti Joshua. He doesn't want to fight Don Tawada because he doesn't believe he's big enough. So, what, so I just keep asking myself, why go back into the lion's den you know, and do it again? Maybe it's for the fans, maybe he loves the fans that much, he's going to put everything back on the line again. But once you rob a bank once, 
they get extra security cameras. They get extra security guards. They might move the safe. And uh, if you're that confident you can rob a bank twice, well, good luck to you. But I, I will not allow, I will not allow Tony Bellew to hear the final bell. Will not allow this to happen. I've, I'm doing everything humanly possible to make sure it doesn't happen. And I'm healthy, I'm very healthy. I'm in very good condition. As I said, every day since, since the last fight, I've been working, focusing, analyzing. And you're gonna see, I've said it before and I was wrong. But I believe I have the right pieces of puzzle in place to get the very best out of myself. And you'll see on December 17th, you know, the very best uh, David Hay. So tune in, it's gonna be fun. Hopefully uh, Tony Belly has the same motivation he had for the first fight. I really hope so. Because if he does, we've got ourselves a fantastic fight and every single person tuning in around the world will get their money's worth. So. Thank you very much, and uh, I look forward to seeing you all on December 17th at the Oto Arena. Thanks, David. Let's get straight over to the man with the rocky story who won the World Cruiserweight title in front of his beloved uh, Everton Football Club fans, who then came to London as a massive underdog and prevailed again on that wonderful night for him at the O2. What is the motivation? What is the reason Tony Bellew has taken this? Let's hear from him. Thanks for all coming. Uh, I'm a little humbled and honoured that so many will come to a press conference to watch us talk nonsense. So thanks for coming. That's the first thing. Uh, to answer your question, David, what motivates me? The same thing that motivated me the first time, just to get home safely. It was always the same in the first fight. I fight because, believe it or not, I actually enjoy fighting. I admit I've got a screw loose, uh, but I enjoy having a fight. I can honestly say I don't enjoy the 12 weeks, well, this will be 14 weeks build up to this. I don't enjoy losing loads of weight or whatever it is that I've got to do in camp, but fight night, I love it. I love walking the ring. I love punching you in the face. I love getting punched in the face. Some of the stupidest and craziest things I enjoy doing. I don't know why. Like I said, I've definitely got a screw loose. Uh, so the motivation is still exactly the same as it was in the first fight. When it comes to why did I take this fight, I mean, I just can't believe the analogy he's just used. Unbelievable. Robin a bank, he's just... I, I, it must be you've run out of insults for me or, or nicknames for me. I, I just can't believe you used that phrase, robbing a bank. I didn't rob no bank. I got in a boxing ring. I punched you senseless and then I got it, went home and kissed me kids and had a great night. So, eh... Uh, I'm just going to do the same again. I don't know what kind of speech you're expecting from me, but I haven't got one. Uh, December the 17th, I will turn up and I will win again against all the odds once again. I know in my heart, deep down, and so does David, is, he still doesn't rate me. He still thinks he's going to blast me and walk right through me. The same as he did in the first fight, you know. People, everyone forgets and everyone brings up about the injury. Yes, I understand David did have an injury and showed an immense amount of bravery. Although I goaded him in the first fight and said that he would, don't quit, don't quit. I knew he wouldn't quit. You don't get to the level that David Hayes got by quitting. You don't win the belts he's won by quitting. I knew he weren't going to quit. That's just all pretty much bravado. What I did know is, and what shocked him that I already knew is, I was going to take him to deep waters. David Hay fell apart because I made him fall apart. Pressure, just constantly not being able to hit me clean. And when he did catch me clean, he got the shock of his life. It's gonna happen again on December the 17th. Don't be shocked. If anything, this fight's not gonna go as long as it did last time. I know that might sound a little bit strange to everyone here because he was injured last time, he's not gonna be injured this time. Well, fingers crossed, I hope he doesn't. Like I say, my goal is to get home safe to our families. Ultimately, David's going to lose December the 17th. David Hayes' career ends on December the 17th. That's basically the, all I really have to say. You know, Thanks for coming. Uh, and tune in December the 17th. It'll be exciting. It'll be great. And I will walk the ring second and dance exactly the same way I did the first time. So thank you. Thanks, Tony. David, Tony's saying you still don't have the respect for him. Um, is that true? Do you respect him 
obviously having shared the 11 rounds with him uh, as a fighter and as a man. Certainly, there's not the pre-fight bravado that there was last time in, at the Dorchester, in your, in your words. Yeah, that's because we've, we've both shared the ring together. I've been in the ring of him. I've dished out my licks. I've received his. And, you know, when you do that with somebody, you know, whatever respect wasn't there prior to the fight is there now. I know turning up in the same condition, mentally, physically, spiritually, to this uh, fight on December 17th, like I did on March the 4th, is not enough. I know that, and I know that because I have, I've, I've learned, learned to respect what he brings to the table. So, in terms of his boxing ability, his durability, his heart, his desire, if I, if I, if I don't assume they're all 10 out of 10, I'm only going to be under, I'm going to underachieve. So I need to believe he's bigger, faster. I mean, I'm expecting him to be way quicker, way faster. His punch output to be double. His, his durability to be more. I'm, I'm anticipating uh, someone who's two inches taller than him, someone who throws quicker shots, counter punches. I'm, that's all I can do is just assume a much better version of Tony Belli turns up. And I believe if that, even if, if that does happen, I'll still be victorious on, on December 17th. But in terms of respect, yes, the respect's there. It has to be there. All you need to do is watch the first fight and you, you realise after the fight, the respect was there. Did you make a massive mistake last time underestimating him? I don't think I... Under, I I've underestimated people in the past and I didn't train hard, for instance. I trained very hard for the last fight. I was in... You can see I wasn't blowing. I was in, I was in good condition. Maybe I just mentally wasn't... I, I don't know, maybe I wasn't mentally where I needed to be to get the best out of myself. Learn that lesson, won't make it again. How confident are you that the injury is fully recovered and that the body is not going to break again? I'm very, I'm very, I'm very, very confident. You know, this, uh, I got five rounds out of myself in the last fight. Uh, I'm already doing things in training that I couldn't do prior to the fight. So I, I, I'm super confident that there's going to be no no injuries whatsoever. I'm going to be, I'm going to be the best version of myself. That's all I can do. And I've, I've, I've worked day in, day out to make sure that on Monday just gone, I hit training camp for the first real day, working strategy, working timing, working rhythms. I mean, I'm in good shape. I could fight tomorrow. If the, if the fight was tomorrow, I'm in good enough shape. I'm, I'm 12 round fit right now. And that's a good place to be going into camp. All I need to do now is focus on the strategy, the technique, you know, the, uh, the, the nuances that a lot of people don't understand about boxing. But come fight night, you will get it. You, wouldn't, you didn't see, you're going to see something very different than you saw the first time around in, uh, in, in, in the first fight. Dave mentioned that you've been with, with very good trainers, Adam Booth, Shane McGuigan, now with Ishmael Sanas. Is that because it is tactically so important to get this right from the opening bell and, and are you going to come in lighter? Some people thought you weighed too much last time. Um, what I weigh, I weigh, I'm not, I'm a heavyweight so I don't need to make a weight or I don't need to be, uh, I, I've always been like this, you know, as long as I'm doing the training uh, that I need to do, as long as I'm sparring well, as long as I'm recovering, as, I'm, as long as I'm eating uh, all of the nutrients I need to eat to to recover and wake up the next morning fresh, I'll wait. You know, I'm I haven't got on the scales for for a while now, and when I get on the scales fight night, I'll weigh what I weigh. But believe me, whatever I weigh, that's what I'm supposed to weigh. I'm not a good on some mad crash diet, or I'm not you know bulky having loads of protein shakes, bulking myself up. I'm not doing any of that. I'm just eating a very very nice balanced diet, training very hard, sleeping plenty, and I'm just focused on focused on the fight. Tony, is this as dangerous a fight for you this time round, or the fact that you've gone through it once, does it fill you with the confidence, maybe not overconfidence, but the confidence that you can do this again and do it quicker? Uh, every fight's dangerous, Adam. David Hay is a vicious puncher who can end the fight in the first second of a fight, so that, that doesn't change. I'm prepared for the exact same. David Hay, brilliant at what he does. Uh, fast, good counter puncher, nice rhythm. The, 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 I'm facing a brilliant fighter. It's as simple as that. Very, very dangerous. Very, very powerful. Uh, 
I know, and David knows deep down, that he doesn't make me. So, you know, he just nearly said it then. He said, he didn't underestimate me last time. He just repeated it again. Well, last time you said I was the worst world champion in world boxing. Last time you said you would drill me to the floor and it would be pretty quick. So, if you didn't underestimate me last time, what has changed? I, I, I just don't get it, you, you know. You got the victory, that's what changed. You won, you won the fight. Of course, uh, we that, both that's, that's why I now rate you. But why? Prove to me in the ring that you were way better than I thought you was. But you've just said you didn't underestimate me. You've just said you didn't underestimate me. You've just repeated I, I, I didn't underestimate you in terms of putting my body through the graft and the hard work needed to be 12 round fit for a fight. Correct, I didn't underestimate you. I don't underestimate I made that mistake years and years ago. I don't do that now. Now I make sure I'm very, very healthy. I, I'm trained so well. I have happened in the fight. 12 rounds, I'm there. That's the so I if I'd underestimated you, I wouldn't have trained. I wouldn't have trained as hard as I did, but I did. And that's why I was still yeah, I, I understand 100%. I do think you trained hard. Well, there you go. So if I underestimated video, you, I wouldn't have trained hard. Regardless of what the video said, but it, your personal, how you look, I understand how you look at me and what you think. You think you're just going to walk through me. And you know deep down you believe that because you, you're so egotistical, you cannot change. You will not change. You know, you train very, very hard, yes, and you know, on the yachts and stuff like that. I do believe it was for show. You know, I do believe you were training very hard. Your sparring partner, Jennings, said that there was no hiccups in training. Your sparring went great. But you've just repeated just a second ago and said, I didn't, you didn't underestimate me. They were your words. Just a couple of seconds ago, you said you didn't underestimate me. So why didn't you blow me away like you said you would do? I don't understand. It doesn't make sense to me. Watch the fight back, you see. Oh, I know why, because you missed Watch like a clown. Fight. Exactly. That's you missed why. by a mile. That's why. It wasn't even close. Your own question. Yeah, I know. I made you miss. It was funny. There you go. That's the answer. I laughed. And then the the best. I kept continuing to make you miss, which you didn't think I could do. Uh, and if anybody looks back at the first fight, we get to the end of the fifth round. Funny enough, David knows this. He was in the ring with me. I said. You're blowing out your ass now. Now your ass is mine. And then what happened in the sixth happened. They were the words I said to him. He walked off and the rest was history. But you know, uh, at, at the point of the fifth round, and I know David doesn't want to bring it up because he's trying really hard to remain with this great persona that he's doing at the minute. He will revert to type soon enough. He will show us true colours. Uh, I'm just being me. But he will show us all again. Trust me. I mean... Mars or Adam, whatever his name, you know, he's doing a great job of, of keeping him in position at the moment. Soon enough, he will be let out the cage and we will see David for exactly like the first fight, exactly what he's going to do, exactly what he thinks of me and exactly the kind of man he is. So, I just look forward to fight night. Uh, this is all nonsense to me. My life's been put into it. I, I reflection. I, what I've been through in the last month, I wouldn't wish on a worst enemy, so it puts everything into, you know, into context. This is just another fight. This is just another fight. I've buried the brother-in-law within the last fortnight. People have no idea. So this is just another fight. David's just another guy I'm going to beat. And then uh, just bring on December the 17th. Yeah, our thoughts are with your family, obviously, Tony, at this time. Um, looking ahead to the fight, once again, David Hayes being made favourite and a big favourite with yeah. the rookies. What, what are your thoughts on that? It's great, isn't it? Last time we were in Liverpool, David said, you gang of retards to my fellow scousers. If all, if you are so confident, bet all your money on Tony Bellew. They did, mate. They won a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Adam, the, I've been underdog more times than probably most fighters who are going there. Every time I get matched, I'm always the underdog. Uh, against Macabre and Goodison Park, I was a huge underdog. That's a, that's a British fighter in his hometown, in his own place, and a young massive underdog. Uh, against David, I was a huge underdog. Against Matthias Masternach. I was the slight underdog. Uh, every time I'm an underdog, I just I, I find a way to come through it. So, like I say, David's a magnificent fighter. Uh, as a fighter, I've always respected him. I've admired and looked up to him at times. I was 
walking around as an amateur boxer, studying and watching and wanting to be like David Hay when he was in a world championship final against Orlando Solis in Ireland. I studied that fight, watched him hit him with one of the best uppercuts he had. Uh, Orlando Solis nearly breaks his back, doesn't hit the floor, carries on and beats David up because David gasses. Uh, that was as an amateur. I studied him against Carl Thompson once again, beating Carl Thompson up. Just has a little bit of a problem with stamina. It's because of his style. It's an amazing style he's got. When he's on top, he's outstanding. He's brilliant. But when he's made to miss, when he's made to pay, when he starts getting frustrated, things go wrong for him. It's shown that throughout his career. Every top level fighter that has beaten him has been learned to adapt mid fight. Vladimir Klitschko beat him. Carl Thompson outlasted him. There's just there's, there's ways and there's formulas of beating David. I know because I've studied him for that long. Like I say, yes, I did admire him, look up to him as a fighter. It's only over this last 12 months I've thought, I'll just refrain from using language. It's a very nice and easy day, so I won't say any nasty words. Uh, just the, the, the kind of person and stuff like that. But taking that away, that has nothing to do with boxing. The boxing style is fantastic. He's a brilliant fighter. But on December 17th, he will lose to the fat boy without a shadow of a doubt. I have no doubt in my mind, and this time it will be quicker. Because this time he will continue to swing for the lights. Everybody goes on about injuries, whatever have you. I don't really care. I won, and that's all that really matters. And I'll win again on December 17th. Keep this act up though, son, because you're doing absolutely fantastic so far. But you will revert to type soon enough. I know you will. I promise you, you will. Finally, prediction time. Uh, David, can you justify the, those odds this time and, uh, and make it revenge and, and then possibly get into a trilogy or, or a dream fight with Anthony Joshua? What's your final say on it? Um, prediction for the fight is uh, you will not hear the bell for the final, for the, for the end of the fight. There will be no... It's all the same as last time. Yeah, like no, different from last time. Last time it was using. Not last time you said you. Around. Last time you said you'd leave me unconscious. Last time you said me. And me then, children will visit me in hospital. That's what you said. I'm just using your words, David, not mine. Last, that's what you said last time. So your prediction is the same as last time. So the prediction for me is Tony Belly will not hear the final bell. Same. That's the prediction. How? What round? I don't know. Whenever it happens, it happens. Depends how much desire he has in the fight. In my opinion. I have more desire than you will ever know. Then we're going to get into it. a great fight, then it's going to go long. You mean, right here the there is no though. quit in me. This is what's the scariest thing. There is no quit in me. Don't get me wrong. I know you're very, very similar with a similar mindset. That's why you've done what you've done and got as far as you've got. But if you remember that text message I sent you last November, it still stands. We ain't spoke since, but it's the exact same person is sitting right here. I will never quit. I will never give in. You'll have to put me asleep to beat me. You're capable of it, but you're not going to do it. I promise you. The only person who's going to lose this fight is you. And you're going to lose it in a, in, a, in a great fight, but you're going to lose it. You're just getting beat up. I'm, I can't wait to just... Just can't wait. I think that's the predictions done. Right, we'll have some uh, head-to-heads and then one-on-ones uh, afterwards. Sky Sports Box Office, December the 17th.